Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second seminar of the spring program of the new HyperI initiative uh, of Spotlight Seminars in AI, which I co organize uh, with uh, the HyperI president, Gianluigi Greco, with Giuseppe De Giacomo, and Chiara Ghedini. And so, after the first successful talk uh, by Maurizio Lanzarini early this month, so today we have another so very well known researcher in the Italian international community, Rita Tucchiara. And it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Rita. Uh, Rita is full professor in computer engineering in the Department of Engineering at the University of Modern Reggio Emilia, where she leads the, the A-Image Laboratory and is director of the AI Research Innovation Center on the Ellis Unit in Modern Reggio Emilia. Uh, she also, in my opinion, made a wonderful job uh, as the first director of the Italian National Laboratory for AI and Intelligent Systems of the CINI Italian Consortium for Informatics. And uh, her, research her research focuses on deep learning technologies and computer vision for human behavior understanding, which is also the focus of our seminar today, which is titled uh, Human Behavior Understanding in Large-Scale Visual Data. And now I can leave the word to, to Rita. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you a lot for the invitation first, and also the possibility to discuss with you and with the student that could be connected with the friends about this is that is one of my preferite topic in computer vision and also is one of the most challenging for many people. So I, uh, I'm sharing the slides with you that I know that uh, you, I think you can see. And uh, if uh, you have a question, of course, you can try to do uh, in the chat now or uh, at the end, uh, um, um, absolutely um, how you prefer. So this is the agenda of today. Um, since I, know, I don't know how many people are aware of what is human behavior understanding is in computer vision, I divided my talk in two parts. The first part is more generic, more general about the problem and the model we have uh, under uh, this kind of uh, of uh, complexities uh, about human behavior understanding. And uh, the second part instead uh, is, um, okay, a sort of, of a long survey of um, the last uh, proposal uh, about action understanding, graph-based representation of that, uh, and human analysis uh, is, is with uh, detection and post estimation. Uh, this is an excusation, non petita in Latin. Uh, there are many ideas, uh, very few details because the time is not a lot, but I, I put a lot of references. So I hope that could be useful for people that starting study this kind of topic. So let's we start with the preamble that human behavior understanding is, of course, a, a, a real problem for, for all, for people in neuroscience, in psychology, in sociology, in uh, geopolitics, uh, in order to understand what the people think and what the people do. And this is the very one of the uh, very famous uh, iceberg metaphor that started from Sigmund Freud, that the idea is that uh, for the human behavior, we are able to see just only the last part of the iceberg. And you can understand that with the computer vision, you can see just only few part of the um, of the iceberg. So this is really a chimera and a solved problem in the last uh, 30 years uh, in uh, computer vision. But why this problem is important in computer vision? First, uh, from the practical point of view, because humans are the more depicted the subject uh, in video, uh, just a, an example, the Coco data set, one of the most famous data set of Microsoft, that has about more than one million of uh, instances like this one that you see. Uh, there are uh, 80 classes of object, but at the end, a quarter of a million are uh, human labeled. So human are really a lot. And the large scale visual data now are available everywhere in, on the web with data set, but also in a real application. Yeah, because uh, this is really a theoretical problem. Problem. Many people are working on them from the theoretical point of view. But uh, a few days ago, I started to, to do a list uh, 
of uh, the, the place where they see application of computer vision and human behavior understanding. I have no time to discuss uh, every one of that, but I say uh, uh, the problem started in security, and especially after the September 11, many big companies in the US started to work in video surveillance, understanding human in video. Now, probably also for privacy issue in, in Europe, it's more important for safety, for safety of the worker, for health, for studying uh, the interaction between people, between children with robot. For culture, this is an example. For instance, now in Rome, there is in Maxi a big uh, exhibition where the visitors are tracked and detected and their uh, engagement with the art are connected in a graph in order to understand the visitor behavior. And this is done with uh, this kind of algorithm I discussed today. Also, another example is, of course, in automotive, inside the automotive to, understra to understand the driver attention or outside in order to understand the pedestrian, for instance, in sport, but probably the most important topic is media and web because uh, Google, Amazon, uh, Microsoft and all of them need uh, this kind of, uh, of algorithm and models in order to annotate, uh, retrieve, uh, describe uh, all the footage, uh, the video footage that is on the web. Unfortunately, there is also defense and now war that is uh, one of the topic where this uh, kind of algorithm unfortunately unfortunately, are considered. Okay, so the applications are many, but also the problems are many, and let's we start with some definition, because when I say behavior is a very generic word, they say, okay, there is a, the, if you look at a picture like this one, you can understand the behavior of the poor housekeeper of the people, but uh, in general, you can see the, the, the concept of movements, action, and activity. These are the definition that have been done in one seminal work of Ramachalapa and other people in proceeding of IEEE in 2008 uh, uh, from the point of view of computer vision. So if a movement are just only atomic and primitive to detect people, action are simple motion factor that are short duration of the time that can be computed. Activity is more generic and take into account also uh, pu uh, more people, even if in computer vision or action and activity sometimes are uh, used as synonymous, is that behavior is uh, a more complex uh, type of interaction, and not only of people, but also the contest uh, and uh, uh, the the object and the human behavior at the uh, uh, understanding at the end can be summarized uh, as a problem of recognizing some given categories and involved all the problem in computer vision detection classification segmentation retrieval textual description explanation so everything can be used for human behavior understanding this is something that a fantastic sociologist says. And look, if you have interest in on that, of introduction of real human behavior biology, that is another thing that is important. Okay, what computer vision could do or probably could not do? For instance, you can start for a single image and just all in a single image like this one, you can understand by the motion of the feet uh, what they are doing, try to understand that an elegant rich and respectful woman is carrying the handbag and some pack or so on. But of course, if uh, if instead of having uh, uh, just only an image, you have a video, absolutely is better because you can uh, use not only information coming from a single frame, but you can also use uh, a video. Of course, you understand that, uh, that describing the action in a video like this one is very hard, but sometimes can be harder. Consider something like this one. It's really very difficult to understand that uh, you can describe that uh, like uh, people that standing some bathing uh, over the car in California. So this is really something that is uh, unusual and uh, describing an action like this one, of course, uh, is not so easy. Uh, HBU is a very long story, probably a story coming 20 years ago. I, I put uh, this image because it's a very important important is it was one of the first attempts to detect people in an image from Amnon Shashua, the, uh, the senior uh, founders of Mobileye that now is uh, uh, integrated in Intel and probably in all the car that we have. 
And uh, we started uh, uh, in Modena to work uh, on this many years ago, actually. I, I, I took this image because I presented in Hyperia workshop in 2005. So it's something that uh, um, uh, is uh, something interesting for me. But uh, also last week uh, in, uh, in our conference, uh, each up, uh, the problem of understanding uh, uh, recognition, some specific uh, behavior like inebriation is uh, something that uh, is there studied. Mm, one second to say that uh, 10 years ago, uh, people like uh, Alessandro Vincerelli, Nico Sebes, Theo Gevers and Ali uh, Salah started this uh, mm, workshop of human behavior understanding and every year they cover a different topic of that. Next one will be in October, in, in August. So there are really a lot of data of that. Okay, so um, in general, when people talk about computer vision now in the deep learning era, uh, many people talk about, okay, we need data, and if uh, we have data, we have enough. Uh, it's absolutely not true. I think that uh, data are absolutely important, but what is important is the model that we would like to use, especially because now the model in computer vision is, okay, you have to start to process visual data, but you have to decide how to change the representation of your data in order to extract better the knowledge you have in the pixels and in order to make inference. Now change representation is, uh, is done going in latent space in deep learning, but you can use many different manner to do that. And this sort of is a creative problem as most of the people in, neuro, in neuroscience say that uh, human vision is a creative process as also computer vision is. Okay, so uh, as I told, we need data. In general, data are created with a data set because now so uh, everything can be reproduced many times. And sometimes it's important that have been ground rooted by humans, even if not necessary. But we need models. And about model, there are really three types of model. We need the model of the goal. So what we need to do in this case, understand what the human do in visual data. And we need the measures. Uh, as uh, Gi Giuseppe Di Giacomo know, uh, quite uh, qualitative AI is important, but quantitative AI is still more important because we need to measure the result of our data. And also it's important to have the models of what uh, we, we work uh, uh, in uh, visual data, extracting some visual feature or the structure. The feature can be human defined, so handcrafted, or can be learned, or can be structured as a graph, for instance. And then you need the inference model. Deep learning could be human defined machine learning, um, constraint logic programming, what you want. But the problem is that if you have the possibility to put all together data, measure for training, learning feature, and inference model, then putting all together, really you can do an artificial intelligence giant, for instance, to understand that this is not only a, a stupid image, but is a part of movie and something that we can understand. Okay, so just to close the... Um, the presentation of the problem, uh, the, domain, the goals can be divided at the end in three main goals. The first, very generic, is understand where the human are and what they are doing, as typical happen in video surveillance, like in this example. A second type of goal is also when you have collaborative people or less collaborative, but to understand what really one people is doing or few people are doing. This is an example, for instance, what we are doing with the Tetra Pak in order to understand the ergonomy of the worker working with some machine. Or this is study something we are doing with data logic in order to understand the people in automatic, in retail, uh, during uh, interacting uh, with, uh, with uh, this kind of machine. Or the, the possibility is to understand the, the human behavior considering what they see. So what uh, we call the egocentric vision. So understand, like in this case, uh, what the people see. Give us an example coming from my lab that we will see after. The first, okay, 
is understand the people in general now they are identified by pause. This is the last trend, at least of the last five, six years to that we will discuss. Second possibility is that to understand the behavior of people, uh, understanding, for instance, their body motion. This uh, is a, an interesting work we did uh, seven years together with Franco Zambonelli and with a psychologist in order to understand in your body body behavior. So if you are open or closed, if you are some prejudice in rational data, it was an interesting result, uh, not for a scientific point of view, but for the result of the problem. And this is the third uh, topic we discussed a lot in, in automotive in order to understand in this case of a pedestrian or what's up and around. So in order to create a, a, a neural network capable to, to mimic the, the behavior of driver being a driver. Okay, uh, as I told you, data sets are, are really important. And according to the domain, we have the very different data set that can be used. These are very famous data set in computer vision some from drone, like Stanford drone or this drone, some for tracking people like Mods 17 or many other, some using uh, egocentric vision, or Kitty from Automobile. The number of data set are enormous. Of course, I have no time to discuss all of them, but just to tell you that uh, Instance of action and the num the dimension of data set increasing a lot. The last uh, Ava Kinect uh, 700 we used with some uh, my PhD, take into account uh, 1.7. You need a supercomputer and Chineka data or large GPU in order to work with them. Uh, this data set, among the data set, I have to say one fantastic experience that is Ego4D that the Facebook is doing together with those Italian people from Catania uh, that uh, are collecting uh, centric data from nine different countries, about 1,000 of people connected. So really the data set that we can have are different. And also the, the, the topic of the person, have a part of the person, you can have uh, in entire person, like for instance, to understand uh, the deaf uh, signs, uh, or you can have group of people. This is something we did the um, municipality and the policy, or you have enormous amount of, uh, of people like this one, like uh, the seminal work of Mubarak Shah in, uh, um, uh, in, in Central Florida uh, many years ago. And finally, you have a lot of constraint that you can take into account or not, depending on your problem. Problem of performance and low power, problem of scalability, sustainability. This is important, just a few numbers. In order to do this experiment last year, uh, to, to look at how to create a, a network smaller uh, and to decrease the number of gigaflop from 40 gigaflop to 10.4 gigaflop, we, 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 we use something like 1,000 GPU hours in, in Chineca. So uh, probably the deep learning method of today are not sustainable uh, enough. And so we, we should do something better absolutely in the future. We have the problem of explainability, privacy complied, high risk constraint. Uh, I could uh, talk a lot about that, but I would like instead to go in the direction of the techniques and the model. So which are the tasks? We are, the classical task, the classical pipeline or the classical set of tasks that are, are done in computer vision is start to detect people uh, now with the pose estimation tracking them in during the time, look if there are many like in crowd analysis, providing re-identification that means um, retrievers if the same person have been seen many times. 
anomaly detection. Sometimes uh, you can do this directly without going uh, through uh, all these steps. And then there are a lot of other things that you can do, looking at biometrics, sentiment analysis, egocentric or saliency detection, or also using visual language interaction in order to provide behavior assessment. Okay, of course, uh, I could spend three hours to discuss all of them. So let uh, we consider just only a few problem. And I would like to try to do something in the opposite manner. So start from the end, uh, not uh, start uh, from the beginning. So I would like to start uh, from uh, the, the concept of uh, action understanding as a whole. Because uh, uh, in uh, literature now, in computer vision, when you try to do action understanding, so understanding what uh, this person uh, is doing, you can do different things. So now you can try to classify the clip action as a whole. So to, to take a clip and independent of the fact that there is a person or not, to try to understand um, what what does that represent uh, this action? Of course, you have to do use machine learning and you have a model of similarity between clips in order to detect that. The second, the second method, as I told you, is that to look at multiple people and to model their pose or to use something that put together this information and also the information about the context and the object. Among a, a human action, there are also several subtasks that you can consider. This is a interesting. I, I borrowed from this person this picture because I like a lot. So you have the problem of action recognition. If you take the clip, you use that together. If you have a, a object action prediction, if you observe the first time and try to that the part is, is not observed, you have a temporal or spatio-temporal proposal. If you try to find the action in a video, if you don't know the start and the end is part, and the localization detection means really, I would like to look where is the action as is this. And finally, you have also the problem of describe the action. About the action recognition, uh, again, uh, the methods are divided if uh, there is a trimmed or untrimmed. That means uh, if you know uh, if uh, the clip contains exactly the, your action or should you have also to detect where is the action done. Or sometimes action really are detected just all use a keyframe. Sometimes this is really a supervised uh, classification problem. Sometimes it's not. So if you use that like a class classification problem again you have to take uh, all the frame try to embed the feature uh, to encode them uh, in a vector that you can use and then try to extract uh, some info classification in order to detect the class uh, or detect the multiple label or long tile if there are some classes uh, that are not uh, so important um, many many methods and uh, what is the difference between one method, sorry, and uh, uh, and uh, another is uh, mainly the to describe them. Uh, this is a long, uh, it's a difficult picture, but for people that are doing a uh, computer vision, probably everything of that very well known. So in the past, uh, before before deep learning, we use the handcrafted feature like uh, this uh, part. So use a histogram of gradient, histogram of optical flow, trajectory analysis, uh, embedding all together in order to do a classifier. Then uh, with the arrival of convolution or 2D convolution or inception or so on, you can use a convolution in order to do that. Convolution can be done not only single image, but using uh, what they call the tube. So the detection and uh, representation together and also segmentation of the part in order to do a visual embed. On the recently, the most important method of today are based on transformer. And so you have to decide how can you tokenization, you can provide the tokenization of the data in order to put put uh, in uh, in uh, the transformer actually many method of uh, uh, action analysis with the transformer have been proposed just only last year many many of them of 
cannot uh, uh, consider just only I selected the one that I prefer because there are something that are useful and especially uh, the difference between one method in transform or the other are the method that encode the data just only 2d 3d single frame uh, all the clip what i would like to say just all in one slide that um, at the end uh, we understand that uh, transformer in general are uh, 10 times more parameters look at this column and uh, 10 times more consuming but uh, Result uh, are not uh, 10 times better. If you look at the accuracy with respect to the 3D CNN, okay, you have an improvement in general, but uh, the, you just arrived just only the 80% in top one classification. So, in those simple data set like Kinecti. So, there is a lot of things to do. But apart of the single classification, I believe the next uh, um, experience in the future will be the to look at the importance of what we call the out of distribution. So understanding uh, uh, what you can understand, uh, you can uh, uh, understand about the action of people, even uh, this data have not been annotated or very few annotated. In general, we use the term zero shot learning or generalized uh, zero shot learning. Zero shot learning, uh, if uh, you train in some classes and then you try to, to classify a new classes. Generalized uh, zero shot learning is still more complex because uh, you can have in your training, in your test set, both uh, known and unknown classes. So before you have to understand if your target is out of the distribution and then to find approach in order to understand that this is not, okay, apply I makeup or dancing, but uh, it's uh, a, new, um, a new action. Uh, many methods have been uh, proposal of that. The basic idea is to put together from one side detection and another side of retrieval in order to to represent better the action and then to find a manner in order to to work in uh, uh, now we use the term in open world so in in the data that for instance you can find with the big uh, network like clip or the other they find the similarity between clips if uh, there are some similarity from uh, between some clips that have been tagged by someone and the clip that you say. So it's not true that it's unsupervised. Uh, I, we could say that has been supervised by something else. Or you can find some uh, new method that instead uh, try to um, cluster better the, the data in order to separate uh, the, discrimina the discrimination of the classes. Uh, uh, okay, I like to do a bit of uh, uh, of publicity. Uh, this is something we submitted to Neurips uh, two weeks ago uh, in order to, to try to separate the classes uh, really for action analysis and action classification using uh, some matrix uh, at the end uh, of uh, deep learning method. Um, it will be on archive uh, very soon. Another problem is that uh, you, you have... Uh, to, to understand that data is important, but it's more important that you have a model that training on data can be moved in another data. So uh, the recent research are going in the direction of what we call the contrastive video feature learning in order to find which are the features that detected in one type of frames on the type of video can be used in other uh, in other video. This is interesting work that has been done by Italian and not Italian people from Monique, Sebe, Vittorio Murino, Lisa Ricci and many other about that, that I believe that is really interesting. About action prediction, okay, looking about the future is a, a fantastic chimera. And uh, uh, in general, there are two possibilities uh, or using generative or uh, not generative uh, methods. Uh, just uh, to be to give a definition for someone working on this area, we use the term prediction. If uh, uh, if you have just only to uh, classify uh, an incomplete input, uh, and instead uh, you use the term anticipation, instead uh, if uh, is a, 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 a real time and uh, online method. So you have a part that has been observed and the part. Uh, is not observed. Uh, this method 
uh, are very new indeed. Uh, action predictions, some of them are, but are very close uh, to the problem, for instance, of trajectory prediction. That is a problem that is a very hot problem in automotive, but also in drone analysis, also in behavior analysis by surveillance. This is, for instance, something uh, we will present uh, in the next uh, CVPR uh, in, uh, in one month. Uh, that is the idea to use uh, self-attention to look which could be the more probable trajectory of a person according to the knowledge of a possible goal that you have. So you know that, for instance, this is a Stanford uh, area that is more probable that you go in this direction probably because there is uh, the, um, the cafe shop here with respect to the other. Uh, but there are many approaches in order to, to try to propose uh, uh, actions, uh, for instance, uh, to understand which has temporal action, sometimes uh, before detect the end uh, and the, the starting and the end, and then uh, try to classify them. In other, uh, they try to find something that is considered actionless. So the idea that could be an action uh, of that. Of course, now they have done also with a transformer because transformer is last fashion. And so all of people are working on top transformer. And if you really would like to be uh, to, to know everything about that, look at this uh, last uh, work of uh, Kesnuk and the people from Amsterdam. Very interesting about what is called the tablet transformer. That is another thing. OK. According, if you want to understand the behavior, you have also to describe to poor human uh, what's happening in the image and in the video. And uh, image captioning or video captioning is one of the methods that can you, you can use to do that. Um, many people are working on that. Uh, in, in our lab, we, we have a long story about captioning. But I say that captioning is not enough because it's depending on also what you would like to do. Uh, to describe in uh, uh, in an image or in the video. For instance, uh, uh, we proposed a uh, few years ago this method that is called the show, control, and tell, that before put the attention of some part that are salient in the image, like uh, what you say in, uh, in this part. And then in this case, we use uh, an LSTM in order a recurrent neural network in order to generate uh, the sentence. OK, there are two girls that are skateboarding toward a car in a, in a city street. So uh, also this can be used also for explain uh, what, uh, what is in the same. Um, uh, as I told you, everything that uh, uh, has been done in the past uh, with uh, LSTM or with other method now probably are better than uh, with uh, transformer. But in this case, this is not a problem just only of, uh, uh, okay, last fashion, but it's because transformer are really very important. Why transformer are important? Are important because uh, uh, in transformer, you have not only a small receptive field, but you have an infinite receptive field. And you can put in in a relationship the different part of the object, like I say, an, in not explicit graph representation of the part. So we try to explain that what we do with the transformer now in order to describe that here there is a person that is cooking a piece of cake with a knife, that the transformer try to extract a similar part in the coder layer and creating the attention of this. Uh, this is a very last uh, work that we submitted uh, in a journal a few days ago, um, but if you're interested in that, ask at me. Okay, adding graph is very important. As I told you, it can be done uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in an intrinsic manner, but you, you can also uh, in uh, in explicit manner. And really, whenever you put the relationship between object actors, in this case, uh, we use from one side the detection of the actors, so the person that are there, the other side the detection of some object, uh, we try to create a graph and try to solve an isomorphism between graph along the time. In general, even you spend more 
it's because you can put it in relationship uh, the three part in general okay if you look at this graph uh, you improve uh, even uh, it, it uh, became, became more complex i would uh, put uh, the uh, your attention uh, or something that uh, I didn't know before, but in neuroscience and in psychology, people use a lot of the term affordance. Affordance means referring to the action possibility that an object presents on human. So, for instance, you say, if I have a knife, a knife can be used for cutting, for stabbing, for poking, for slicing, for many other things. So, if you can the uh, represent this kind of affordance uh, and you can put that uh, also in a neural network uh, or you can put uh, together information about the knowledge representation and information about uh, um, about the feature extracted in a neural network in really a very interesting manner. I think this is a future because in many fields the knowledge representation at the beginning is important. Okay, I spend a lot of time. I think uh, I have just only a few minutes. Uh, jo uh, someone please tell me in the chat how many minutes I have, uh, probably five minutes or minutes, uh, tell me better. But uh, I, I, uh, I spend, okay, five minutes is okay. I spend a lot of time to discuss about uh, uh, human analysis, uh, uh, behavior analysis as a whole. But at the end, uh, what uh, uh, is a more intuitive, uh, straightforward, is that if you want to find a human analysis, uh, we should uh, look uh, about human. Uh, with, uh, with deep learning, sometimes this is done inside, intrinsically. But uh, of course, you have the possibility to extract information of human is better. And now there is a lot of possibility because in the last five years or six years, many methods based uh, Open Pose is the most famous one that is uh, uh, also open source. You can extract some information about the important key point of the person and then repeat the connection between this point as a graph in order to classify the action. But so you, you can use all the problem that you have in computer vision, but I don't want to, to work on that. On neither to talk about uh, um, people detection that started 20 years ago, and now many people are working on that. People detection in 2006 to 2005 has been considered really a machine learning problem with many different topics. But now I don't want to say, say that this problem is solved, it is absolutely not solved, but using annotated the deep. This, uh, you know, the results uh, are uh, are pretty good. Uh, many, many different uh, methods have been used, but uh, uh, among them, uh, consider just only the fast RCN and the probably all the people working in computer vision know. But this is interesting because uh, in this manner you have uh, okay the model that you can extract the general feature, you can extract some region of interest, and then. The model you put is that you extract um, not only the, the classification of the object, but together in regression, the position of the bounding box. The problem of, uh, of people detector is that uh, is not solved uh, absolutely because really there is a problem of domain transfer. So uh, what uh, you can uh, detect uh, and train in that one data set if you try in another, that the performance are absolutely worst. So we, we should have a lot of work to do that. If you go in a drone, uh, it's uh, still worst. There are many methods and also many enormous data set. Of about tracking, I don't say anything because if you want to know more about tracking, look at this fantastic uh, keynote uh, that Laura, uh, Laura Lealtec said did the last week. So I don't skip that. And spend my few last minutes to discuss of one fantastic model that is about the pose estimation. Why I like that? Because at the end, after this long trip to Germany in computer vision, if we want to see human, 
we still uh, go uh, in the concept of modeling the human. And so sometimes in order to understand motion and to understand one, it's just enough to have a few points. And you, of course, you can use different, mo uh, uh, different uh, models. For instance, this is the famous uh, Coco model that use uh, 19 uh, pop. And this is uh, the Max Planck model that instead use just only 15, but more or less you understand uh, are similar. And uh, many uh, methods that have been proposed or to detect and to detect the deep key point of the people or before detect all the key point and try uh, to put together in just all in mask. This is the most famous uh, open pose uh, uh, the, the initial word uh, name was a CPM, uh, presented by the group of uh, Carnegie Mellon University from Yasser Seik and Takio Kanade in 2016. And start of this method, interesting, because at the end there is a Bayesian network uh, uh, under this network, uh, because there is a part of belief that is used for a second part here. You can find uh, many different things. I skip can use uh, many different uh, uh, method. One problem that you have on that is about occlusion, because if you have not the, the, the annotation of the occlusion, you can do anything. So what we did uh, together with a group of Munich uh, is uh, to create a, a synthetic data set. So now we created probably the biggest data set uh, with a million of people walking, created uh, just only using uh, a data set like uh, uh, video games in order to have all the information of that. And we, uh, and also with a lot diversity of people, also or strange people that have been put because it was a video game. So my students enjoy a lot to do that. And uh, if you have all the information, what is interesting, you have also to model 3D information and also the occluded part because in the synthetic data you have. And the, and now results uh, are really interesting in order to find uh, all the person. At one that is uh, more interesting, this is the work that I did, is that now you can uh, um, use just all the synthetic data in order to train the data center. And you, if the, the, the synthetic data are enough large, enough, uh, with enough variety, uh, you don't need real data. And this is fantastic also for problem of privacy because you can use the same method also in that. Um, I'm closing my presentation. Of course, the data are available. So if you want, you can, you can train that. You can have many information about 3D. And so, for instance, uh, you can understand everything about the motion of a person and also for instance, like in this case, uh, interact uh, with um, with um, robot or similar things, uh, or providing uh, at the end a classification uh, using, uh, in this case, uh, key points uh, and the detection, and so looking specifically of the action of single part. Of course, this is an experiment; is not working uh, in the under especially in difficult things, but uh, has been used also in real time. So I'm very proud of that because uh, this method that is based on uh, human understanding, this kind of thing has been used in real setting uh, for it now is uh, used uh, in some hospital and uh, in, uh, in some municipalities in order to understand the, uh, the position of the person. Uh, they, of course, now is less important, but during the uh, it was important. My conclusion, summary, uh, summary, there is no conclusion uh, indeed. The conclusion is that uh, if you want to do human behavior analysis or action analysis, analysis in video, uh, mainly you have uh, two different approaches or to detect people or people and object and try to uh, discuss about them or try to, to take uh, all the information starting directly on pixel, but what's important is to understand how to model the, your knowledge and extract them. Uh, solution are still very hard to be uh, to be concluded, and this uh, is uh, I hope that you could do something better to what the people did until now. So thanks a lot. Many thanks, Rita.
Thank you very much for this uh, very impressive overview of all uh, uh, of the so Thanks the for your virtual clap, Marco. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I know if now, uh, okay, uh, probably I could have the same problem I had before. So you 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 was able to listen to me. I hope that to be able to okay. listen to you. Let's see. Marco, let's ask if there are questions from uh, the chat. Okay. Yes. Okay, so let's remind uh, first the audience that there is a possibility to add questions on, uh, on the YouTube chat. Uh, maybe. Um, but okay, let's start for, uh, from something. Okay, Rita. Um, um, in my opinion, uh, an interesting uh, research direction in AI is uh, the combination uh, of inductive and deductive reasoning. So let's simplify knowledge representation and deeper machine learning. Uh, I'm curious to know where do you see so this combination fruitful uh, in uh, HBU? Oh, I, I apologize, but I was not able to listen to that. So I, I'm so sorry, I don't know why. If you try to write on the chat, I, I, I would like to do, to, uh, to do better. So uh, the um, uh, the question was, okay, this is a method of reasoning about uh, this information, but I didn't listen to the second part, sorry. Okay, Rita, is, there is a, a question on the chat. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. That, okay, so, so big, big companies, companies, companies are investing billion in computer vision. In your opinion, how can less resource research compete? Yeah, I know. This is my problem every day, actually, uh, because of course we have uh, we are rich, but we have no billions. Um, I believe that, uh, of course, uh, in general, it, probably now we are in the same situation that people are working in pharmacy or in biology as uh, when you go against uh, the big pharma companies or so on. We can do two different, three different things. The first uh, is to invent a new problem or small problem that probably is less important for big company. Okay. The second is that it put knowledge. So instead of working just on in brute force, try to understand the model and propose something that even if is not working on everything, but is focusing on modeling. And my experience is that when you do that, you can really compete with them, or at least big company listen to you and probably try to buy your method or working with you if uh, you have an idea. So I believe that in Italy and in Europe, uh, we know the theory and we should, we should work on that. Final, you can work also in the same, uh, uh, with the same data because also we have uh, computational power. We have the computational power of Chineca. We have some computational power we can do. And so in some, in some possibility, we can try to do similar things uh, also in, in our lab. Okay, it's a big challenge, of course. Chiara, can you hear me? Yeah. Rita, can you hear me? So I, I would like to, to know in your opinion which, which kind of paths can we pursue to, in order to obtain some kind of sustainable methods because you, you discussed this issue about sustainability. So what we can do? Yeah. Okay, uh, you know, sustainability depend is always uh, depending on the resource you have. Because if you if you talk with the people uh, of uh, uh, I, I don't know of astrophysics, uh, for them uh, is completely sustainable to use uh, uh, HPC uh, big uh, uh, supercomputer. In our case, uh, there are uh, many applications that call for embedded results that are not sustainable, and not sustainable in real time where you used but are not sustainable neither in training so neither in that again i i really believe that you have an idea of the model okay you can use brute force as i did so in that example i showed you many slides before uh, yeah, I, uh, we use a knowledge distillation method uh, that uh, we use the big uh, network and tried to prune uh, cutting away some parts. 
it was just only an experiment, uh, but it was an experiment that was uh, uh, really just uh, to say, okay, it's, a, it's uh, too big. Uh, what is that we could try to understand uh, if uh, uh, there is some, something that can be modeled uh, prior, and in order to do that, uh, to avoid uh, to extract everything uh, by scratch on the data, if you already know that, for instance. So I think that putting together knowledge information, modeling, and data processing will be one possible solution for next sustainability. And then, okay, there are also many mathematical foundation methods that instead, for instance, try to completely change the back propagation approach. So there are also some part that is uh, are intrinsic in neural network uh, that in order to improve uh, the gradient descent or change them, but is another type of, uh, of research. Thank you. Thank you. Fabrizio Scudo, to improve the, the other generalization, being able to factorize information is essential, I agree. What is your opinion about uh, 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 the approach called object-centric learning? Yeah, okay. Is I didn't use this term, but sometimes uh, is uh, uh, is one possibility. Um, as I told you, um, sometimes you can do in explicit way. So, like uh, in uh, this image that is uh, open here, you, you don't see, but okay, it was uh, um, one slide. So, if you have to before extract all the object, put uh, the center of information in the object, extract uh, the relationship, and then discuss of that in order to factorize, factorize or uh, divide the team. But at the end, uh, is something that you can do. Uh, otherwise, uh, at the end, you are doing the same if you use a transformer architecture. So if you use a transformer architecture, similar things are being done in, uh, in the architecture. For instance, uh, um, what we did uh, two years ago uh, is uh, this uh, new part that is called the meshed memory architecture. We modified transformer really in order to have an explicit information about the memory, about the connection between the objects. Okay, it's not uh, it's not so easy. You have to 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 to. What I say is better not to use something just only take a, a network by GitHub and try to see if you use it. This is not research indeed. It's just only uh, adoption of AI. So I hope that uh, sometimes it's useful if you have to do something else, but try to understand the model that is inside. Richard Itman. Question, do you think that the use of synthetic data set can fully solve the problem of domain transfer? Bah. Uh, uh, okay, mm, from one side, yes, because there are many uh, engineering and science domain where uh, people use uh, synthetic data. Uh, if you go in automotive, uh, there is no cars that have been created, uh, not in the synthetic world before. So there are many, uh, many uh, worlds where people use in, in synthetic data. What we, uh, I don't want to say demonstrated, but just only shown in the work we did uh, with the people of, uh, of Munich is that if you have a very large uh, variety of data, very large data, synthetic data, and the synthetic data realistic enough, uh, you can do that. For a human, uh, for instance, it's good because, uh, you know, the video games uh, are absolutely realistic. For many other things uh, uh, are not so good, but using a synthetic data set is also useful for privacy issue and uh, also to avoid yeah, to avoid also the bias, because if you create a synthetic data, you can control uh, the, the type of data you are with. Thank you. So, okay. Marco, any further question? Okay, so let's see if I'm more, I am more lucky. Okay, Rita, you were speaking about explainability, right? Yeah. So, what kind of explainability do you think is useful in uh, HBU? Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, 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 yes, yes, Giuseppe. You, but uh, I tried to to answer before to the, the question of Marco. But I'm uh, sorry, Marco. But I'm not able to uh, to, to listen. Can you repeat? So can you uh, I, I read it or, what kind of or ask to Gianluigi to tell me because I don't know why I don't see you. Uh, I, oh, I've written. 
Okay, what kind of explainability is used in human behavior understanding? Yeah. Uh, from one side, I believe that there are two types of explainability useful. The first uh, is uh, from the engineering point of view. So to understand what's happened and to do better. So, for instance, we use a lot of visualization of the uh, of the neural activation in order to understand the problem of sustainability, of especially to understand why the system is not working. So, explainability is very useful to understand, like in a control system, why it's not working. The second step is that. Uh, probably still more important if you want to sell uh, our system is to provide explainability for the user because uh, explainability on the user can be done with uh, visualization with constraint uh, or rules that can be extracted sure. or yeah. either i was talking discussing with people from leonardo groups uh, that if you want to go to work uh, with people that are used uh, with the function with the mathematical function you can try to find a function that approximate uh, like proxy things and just say okay look uh, there is a, a correlation between the result that uh, achieved with the deep learning and with the uh, i don't know a bayesian uh, function or um, a mix of gaussian and so you can try to understand that is similar okay so, but it's very important, absolutely. It's very, very important, explainability now. I believe the same. Thank you, Rita. Mm -hmm. One uh, first question, Rita, from uh, Giuseppe De Giacomo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the strength of the AI community is that uh, we are so beautiful together. <laughs> that, <laughs> and no, no, that uh, we enjoy all other to stay uh, together. And uh, I had a fantastic experience in the last uh, three years uh, and really believe that uh, you see that uh, our community, even if it uh, seems to be in cluster, but is obvious because uh, computer vision, natural language processing, I don't know, symbolic uh, optimization seems to be different. But at the end, uh, we use the same we, we use the same language. And I believe that uh, there are of possibility to to combine and to work together and you know uh, i say uh, this is important if you look at the result uh, in um, a scientific result uh, uh, the last uh, shimago data of this year that uh, uh, according to that uh, the number of citation of italian community is the best of Euro, uh, european community so it's not the best with respect to uk but now uk is outside no problem of that uh, but uh, okay we are in the group of the best one uh, of course very far to china and the us uh, for the quantity but not for the quality i believe that uh, what we lack uh, and i say uh, is uh, the the strong connection uh, um i don't want to say strong connection with industry but a strong connection with industry that do research that is different because in general uh, the industry know that what we are uh, doing is used so they ask at us and they also pay us but what's most important is to have uh, com uh, companies uh, and uh, infrastructure not only from uh, university and uh, and cnr or that do research to with us uh, in order to to ground uh, our theory in some important uh, problem of Italy. I really hope uh, that uh, the opportunity I will have in the next uh, three years will be uh, not uh, get lost uh, in many different things, uh, but uh, that all co AI community will be able uh, to stay together and to think in large and to think in large problem and not in one million of problem. Okay. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Okay, Rita, thank you. So, looks like so we are done for today. Um, I would like to thank uh, Rita first for this wonderful presentation eh? and the very interesting replies. And of course, Gianluigi, Giuseppe, and Chiara. That so we are we are organizing together so the the seminars and uh, so to the audience. Thank you for participating, and we look forward to uh, June the. 24, uh, 24th, if I remember correctly, because there will be most of our these seminars. Okay. Which you can expect it is very, will be very interesting as the one that Rita is, has given today. Thank you very much, Rita. I really enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.
Bye bye. Okay. Thank you all for participating.